Canon is standing at a fascinating crossroads in its history. On one hand, it is celebrating milestones that highlight its incredible legacy in the photography world. On the other, it's making bold moves toward the future of imaging technology, unveiling new bodies, planning intriguing lenses, and subtly shifting its entire strategy to meet the demands of both professionals and passionate creators. This is more than just another update in the Canon lineup. It's a story of transition, innovation, and reflection. Whether you're a longtime Canon loyalist, a hybrid shooter exploring the mirrorless ecosystem, or someone fascinated by the future of digital photography, what's happening right now with Canon deserves your full attention. So, let's dive into the complete breakdown of Canon's ongoing developments. From its legendary AE-1 anniversary to the discontinuation of one of its toughest DSLRs, to fresh whispers about groundbreaking RF lenses, and to the testing of cameras like the Canon R6 Mark III and the highly anticipated R7 Mark II, Canon AE-1, the camera that changed everything, to understand where Canon is heading, it helps to take a moment to revisit where it came from. One of the most influential cameras in history, the Canon AE-1, will celebrate its 50th anniversary next year. Released in 1976, the AE-1 wasn't just another film camera. It represented a seismic shift in camera design because it was the first mass-market SLR built around a microprocessor. That might sound quaint today in a world of high-resolution sensors, AI autofocus, and 8K video, but at the time, this decision changed everything. Externally, the AE-1 looked familiar, lightweight, ergonomic, reliable, and approachable. Internally, it was radical. The camera split into five internal modules for automated assembly, drastically reducing the number of parts. This meant better reliability, lower cost, and a production process that could keep pace with a growing demand for advanced cameras. The CPU managed critical operations such as the timing of the focal plane shutter and aperture control. Canon also introduced now familiar concepts like A, detachable power winder, a fully automatic exposure system managed electronically. A hybrid body combining metal with injection molded ABS plastic to balance durability and weight. Of course, no innovation comes without issues. The AE-1 had one fatal flaw. Many third-party electronic flashes at the time triggered at voltages far higher than the AE-1 could handle, sometimes frying its internals. Canon's own flashes were fine, but others could damage the camera. Despite this limitation, the AE-1 became a colossal success. Branded with the slogan, so advanced, so simple, it sold 5.7 million units over eight years setting a new bar for what cameras could achieve. Today, owning an AE-1 isn't just about nostalgia. It's about holding a piece of history that directly influenced the cameras we use now. As its 50th anniversary approaches, many photographers are revisiting this classic model, not just as a collector's item, but as a reminder of Canon's enduring role as an innovator. End of an era. Canon 1DX. Mark III. Discontinued while Canon celebrates the past, it's also closing the chapter on one of its toughest cameras, the Canon EOS 1DX Mark III. Recently marked as discontinued in Japan, the 1DX Mark III represents the final flagship DSLR in Canon's legendary One series, unveiled in early 2020. This camera didn't just cater to photographers, it became a hybrid powerhouse. Let's revisit why it was so special. 20 mm p full-frame CMOS sensor, paired with the Digic X processor, 91 point. AF system through the optical viewfinder, dual pixel CMOS AF with 525 selectable points for live view and video dot burst rates of 16, FPS with the mirror and 20 FPS with live, view 1.4K 60p video, 10-bit 4.2.2 internal recording, and 5.5K raw video, dual CFX press card slots, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and GPS for professionals, built like a tank, meant for sports, wildlife, and high-stakes journalism. The 1DX Mark III didn't have the longest lifespan compared to earlier 1 Series models, but its timing was symbolic. It bridged the DSLR and mirrorless eras, serving as Canon's last great DSLR before the full transition to mirrorless with the EOS R1. The R1 now exceeds the 1DX Mark III in nearly every area. Autofocus, burst speeds, in-body stabilization, ergonomics, and connectivity, except for one thing, the optical viewfinder. Some professionals will always prefer OVFs for their natural look and real-time responsiveness. 
If you've ever wanted a piece of DSLR history, the window is closing. Retailers still have some stock of the 1DX Mark III, but once it's gone, it will join the ranks of discontinued legends. Surprising lens leaks, RF 45mm f1.2, STM and 2050mm f4 PZ Canon's RF lens roadmap is constantly evolving. But a surprising leak caught the attention of the community. On a feedback form from a Canon event, two unexpected lenses were listed. RF 45ME f1.2, STM RF 2050ME f4 power zoom. These aren't your typical L series rumors. In fact, a non L f1.2 prime is almost unheard of from Canon. Raising speculation about whether the company is planning to deliver ultra fast glass at a more affordable price point. The 2050mm f4 PZ, meanwhile, has videographers buzzing. Compact power zoom lenses are often geared toward hybrid shooters and content creators who need smooth zooming for video work. This could serve as a lightweight alternative to the 24-105mm f4L, and if priced competitively, it could be a popular choice among vloggers, filmmakers, and travel photographers. If Canon really does release a 45mm f1.2 STM, it would sit awkwardly next to the RF 50mm f1.2L, but it could attract shooters who want fast glass without paying premium L prices. The call for wildlife lens is one. Of the loudest demands from Canon shooters right now is for super telephoto zooms that bridge the gap between affordability and pro-level performance. Nikon and Sony have made strides in this area, and Canon users want to see answers. Rumored lenses include RF 300 600mm f5.6, RF 200 600mm f4 5.6 RF 200 500mm f4 with built-in 1.4x. Teleconverter these lenses would fill critical gaps for wildlife and sports shooters who currently feel underserved by Canon's lineup. The 200 600mm range is particularly attractive as Nikon already offers a highly regarded 180-600mm that has been well received. The question is, will Canon deliver before the end of the year, or will we have to wait until 2026? Either way, the demand is clear. Expansion of Canon's VCM Prime's Canon has been expanding its VCM Prime lineup. Designed for consistency across size, weight, and performance. Perfect for gimbals and professional video rigs. Currently, we have RF 24mm f1.4. VCMRF 32mm f1.4 VCMRF U1GME f1.4 VCMRF Beishrolmiami f1.4 VCM reports suggest two more are in the pipeline. Likely, a 100mm f1.8 and a 135mm f2. Both would fit neatly into the lineup, maintaining Canon's strategy of affordable, reliable primes that suit hybrid shooters. This expansion is expected around 2026, which means we'll probably see announcements next year. Canon EOS R6 Mark III, final testing. The Canon R6 Mark III is now said to be in the final stages of testing, and it's rumored to feature a 32 mm Pi full frame. Sensor, the same one from the recently announced Canon EOS C50 Cinema. Camera expected features include 32 NEPRs. Full frame sensor DiGC X Plus Accelerator chip for improved. Processing better cooling for extended video. Recording 6K oversampled video. With Canon log options, enhanced autofocus with AI-driven subject detection. The R6 series has always been a workhorse for wedding photographers, videographers, and hybrid shooters. If Canon does deliver cinema-grade DNA in the R6 Mark III, this could become one of its most important cameras of the decade. Canon R7 Mark II, APS-C flagship evolution. Finally, Let's talk about one of the most anticipated updates, the Canon EOS R7 Mark II. The R7 has been a hugely popular APS-C mirrorless camera, but the rumored specs of its successor suggest an even bigger leap. Key rumored upgrades, 32 mm p APS-C CMOS. Sensor no mechanical shutter, fully electronic with 30-40 FPS bursts, upgraded OLED EVF with 0.9x magnification, closer to the flagship R1 dual SD card slots, improved. Heat management with additional venting dot and 6K video recording with oversampling autofocus tech borrowed from the R1 and R5 Mark II. If these rumors are accurate, the R7 Mark II could be a game changer for sports, wildlife, and hybrid shooters who want flagship level performance at a fraction of the cost. Pricing is expected around $2,000, positioning it below the R6 but far more capable than current APS-C offerings.
Final Thoughts Canon is clearly preparing for a massive 2025-2026 lineup refresh. Between celebrating the 50th anniversary of the AE-1, closing the book on the 1DX Mark III, and developing exciting new RF lenses and bodies, the company is signaling that it's ready to dominate both professional photography and the hybrid creator market.